Hi, I'm Kristen. I recently sewed a dress and a hat for New Year's and I released a video that went over some of the process of that but I skimmed over a lot of the hat construction and the electronics because the video was getting quite long so I thought I would go into a little more detail in a separate video. So with that said we first have to talk about buckram. Buckram is a cotton fabric that has been stiffened with either glue, sometimes starch, or sizing, which is a resin material. It um, has a bit of a wider weave than something like quilter's cotton, though you can buy this, I'm sure, with different weaves and weights and levels of stiffness. You can buy it by the yard. Um, you can also you know, buy a giant roll of it thinking, why, of course, I'm going to make hundreds of hats and then let it sit for, you know, a couple years in your closet. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, one of the main interesting things about buckram is that it, well, Let's take a look. If you actually dunk it a little in water, you can actually release some of the sizing just enough to kind of glue it back to itself. Um, I wouldn't rely on this in any kind of critical joint situation. Still better to sew it back up, but it is also the same sort of quality that means you can completely reshape this um, into completely different shapes. Now, if you get it too wet, you're going to wash out all the sizing. So I guess it's uh, a little hit and miss here. The other thing means when you're constructing this, you don't want to get any of it wet that you don't want to actively reshape because then it's going to kind of dry back a little warped. It's never going to be quite as sharply flat as when you get it off the roll. Um, so I actually <laughs> uh, literally just kind of did this um, just to show you can completely re-warp re it and it's um, Totally stiff. Um, also means you're not going to be making something like a rain hat out of this. Anything that needs to be washed in the washing machine in a garment, you can't use buckram. Hats, I guess, are a good thing because generally speaking, you don't wash hats, um, at least the kind that you would use, make buckram from. You can also theoretically maybe make a lining that you could wash as well. Um, but I will say, that this is only my uh, second hat that I've attempted to make. So I am no expert on this. I'm sure there are a lot of better ways uh, to get around some of those issues if you really, really wanted to. Um, in fact, my first hat was actually, it's actually right back here, this lady that keeps staring at you. Um, this crazy thing. So this is a totally different style and <laughs> There's actually a cobweb on there. That's interesting. Um, and uh, it wasn't a very complicated shape. And, but it, at the very least, it gave me a little bit of an idea of how to work with this um, more so. Because um, I had no idea when I started making this how this would even work. I didn't understand how buckram works. <laughs> um, so hopefully I improved on some of my mistakes from this one onto this and then made all new mistakes, of course. If you just sat through that very long introduction where I rambled on about the wonders of buckram, congratulations. I applaud your judgment making abilities. This is just me making a pattern and cutting it out of shocker buckram.
and I'm stitching the lower crown edges together. I'm applying something called Sobo glue to really ensure this stays together. Sobo glue I've found to create a really strong but still somewhat flexible bond, but it also doesn't get tacky very quickly. So for that reason, I found it can be tricky to work with. I'll have to do some more investigation to see if there's a better glue or a better method, or perhaps just don't use so much glue. The next part of constructing this brim is to attach some millinery wire along the edge. That helps keep its shape and it also allows you to sort of bend the brim just a little bit if you like. So I'm just doing a, sort of an overcast stitch of some sort. I don't think you have to be super particular as long as it keeps it on there. It's good enough. And this is me struggling with these little metal joiners that I got for the millinery wire that just help join things together. Um, they work nicely, but I find them hard to get open. So there you go. Now, this is kind of one of my first mistakes on this, or little accidents, I should say, is I really laid on a lot of glue there and the buckram actually got a little too wet and kind of warped itself just a little bit along the bottom. So you have to be careful with that. I don't actually think the glue is probably 100% necessary, but I guess I just want to make sure it definitely stays together. And I also do a strange method where I put the glue on first and then I sew it up because otherwise it is too hard to put the needle through, but then that also makes it quite messy. So probably find a different method is my suggestion. <laughs> Don't do what I did. That's the theme of this entire video. Okay, here we go. So, ta-da, we have a sort of uh, hat going on here. Oh look, it's our favorite glue again. I'm just putting a little bit of batting along that edge there to soften it up so the wire isn't quite as noticeable. And this is me actually sewing together the fabric covering that's eventually going to go over the top of it. And it is made from the same fabric as one of the sleeves on the dress that I made. So it is, I think, an unusual fabric to use because it's kind of a thin, stretchy knit. I think ideally you'd want to actually use a heavier fabric because it would help cover up the texture of the buckram and you may be able to get away with not putting on batting along the outside to smooth everything out. But uh, I just had the fabric, so I went for it. What can I do? This is uh, a last minute idea I had for an inner little zipper pocket to install inside of the hat to hold the electronics. And it turned out later this ended up being maybe a little bit of a mistake, but it does look fairly nice. So that's at least a plus. And then once I had this piece, I realized I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to get it actually attached to the hat. The solution I came up with was to sew a basting stitch on the off the edge of the inner pocket and also on the inside of the hat. So then when I had to go through and hand sew it together, it was easy to match up the basting stitches to see what I was doing. Nonetheless, I made this little pattern out of tissue paper to use as a guide that I literally sewed it to the fabric and then I ripped out the tissue paper, just leaving behind the basting stitch. And so you can see the inner basting stitch on the hat and that's what's gonna get matched up with the little pocket that I just sewed. And now I am attaching the inner fabric to the hat. I'm just having to hand sew all this onto the frame. And this is also the issue if you do use a lot of glue, if once it dries, you gotta put a needle through it, it's, it's a problem because it starts getting really thick with a couple layers of this buckram. 
I may have stabbed myself in the process, as you can probably see with my finger there, the Band-Aid. Oops. And here we go with the finished inside. And uh, as you can see, I also sewed in some elastic loops and then I glued on that ribbon just to kind of make things a little prettier because the stitching got a little wonky on the inside, but it's fine. Just, just keep adding more glue, it's fine. That's what professionals do, right? That's exactly it. So here is the point where I am putting a lot of batting on the hat. And I start out with a really thin batting so that it wouldn't be too bulky or heavy. I'm not sure if I did this again, if I would do this in the same way, I probably should do a little more research on covering this particular shape. It worked out fine, particularly because most of the hat was covered by electronics in the end anyways, but it did kind of come out a little lumpier than I had wanted. It's fine though, it's black, it's glittery. You can't really see it, especially if it's dark. And uh, yep, here I am doing the last folding the inside to meet the outside edges there. And I'm just gluing this down. Normally I'm pretty sure you would do a little slip stitch along the edge like that if you were a real hat maker. But at this point, we're adding the glue. And here we are making a hole to fit some electronic cables. There's a few layers in there, so it's a little tough to get in there. And yes, we added more glue in order to finish the edges. Okay, we are now to the programming portion. So this is the first time I have ever worked with an Arduino. So my knowledge of how to do anything complicated does not exist yet. But this is so far what I did to get this to work. After you open up the Arduino sketch software, you're going to want to go to Manage Libraries. And you're going to need to load the Adafruit NeoMatrix library. In mine, if I install the NeoMatrix, it also asks me if I want to install the other library files. And yes, I do. So install all of those. If it doesn't ask you that, you're gonna to have to go through and install those separately. And then, luckily, they have basically a pre-written example for you already. So you just have to go down into examples and into the Neo Matrix matrix test. And there you go, it's gonna open that up. On the right is the program that I used for my hat. And on the left is the Neo Matrix test program that I use to get started. And you can see it's almost entirely the same thing. I've only changed a few things. The first thing you'll have to do, at least with this, is that this was made for a five by eight matrix and I was using a much larger one. Um, mine was a 32 by eight. Just go in and change that number. And I also changed, I believe, the Neo Matrix Progressive to zigzag. And this is the area where it's gonna depend on your particular display that you may have to change a few things around because it'll display backwards and upside down and all sorts of strange things. Mine happened to work out fine, but I definitely have seen this is not the case for all of these displays. Some experimentation is going to be necessary if you're not using the Neo Matrix. The Neo Matrix cycles through three different colors, and I wanted more than three, so I just added five colors because I thought, hey, let's add some new colors. See what it can do. 
I also turned down the brightness just a little bit, but that's entirely optional. And I think it goes up to a hundred if you want it that bright. It depends again on your particular display. Okay, and now we're getting into the loop. Um, you can see where it says matrix.print is the text that you want to change to whatever you want it to say. I wanted more than one phrase, so I wrote a separate string constant with conveniently five different phrases. This coincides with the colors because I kind of reused something that was already declared in the matrix test partially because I wasn't smart enough to figure it out in time, to be honest. I will figure it out. And I've said before, I actually wanted this to be random and I just quite couldn't quite figure out in time. But I suspect if I look into it a little more, I should be able to figure this out down the road. The other thing is you also, if you have very long phrases, you're actually going to have to change essentially that width number that started out at 36 as to something much larger. So mine says, I changed mine to 90, minus 90 there. It, uh, from what I understand, it's basically going through and, and scrolling through that many pixels. So if you have, if you set that very long and then your phrases are very short, you're gonna have a lot of blank space where there nothing is, is scrolling through. So I found out myself is it's much better to keep all the phrases similar lengths so if you have one word that's very short and all the rest of them are like big long phrases, it's gonna look kind of funny with this. So something to keep in mind. And you'll see the reason why I used five phrases is because when I set that pass down at the bottom that originally says three, it's referring, it's, it's cycling through, it was originally cycling through those three colors. So when I changed it to five, and cycle through five colors. But then I'm also kind of inserting in my scrolling text strings, and I found I could kind of reuse it. And as long as I kept it as five, it would also cycle through the five phrases. Kind of an accidental discovery. I, probably not the best programming decision ever. Don't come at me programmers. I'll swear I'll get, I'll get better later. <laughs> but I am super happy it worked because I was skeptical, let's be honest. And just a real quick look at the connections and the processor. I used an Arduino Nano, but not one of the official products. This is sort of a generic one that I got. So with this particular one and this particular display, which is also just sort of a no-name display as well that I found cheaply, um, I only had three connectors that I had to connect. So it's just the five volt to the five volt and the ground to the ground and DIN, which I think is digital in, went to the number six pin. Yeah, that kind of rhymes. And then I also wrapped a little bit of electrical tape on it to keep it steady while I was in the hat for the time being, since this is obviously not a permanent installation at the moment. And then all it is is with this, I just used the USB port and powered it that way. And this is me just uh, making a quick little box from a little piece of plastic I had at home. That's all I had, so it worked out well. The size was almost exactly the same as the breadboard that I happened to have, so it worked out great. It's just, it's a little big and bulky. And then I just used Velcro for the front of the display so I can remove it easily when I need to and just sort of electrical taped the excess wires that weren't needed out of the way. And here we have it. It's a vinyl hat. It scrolls through things. It's very bright. I was quite surprised at this worked at all. So I consider this a win and I'm definitely going to be doing some more Arduino slash electronics projects in the future. So, yay. Final thoughts. First and foremost, I would say 
One of the bigger issues at the moment is that this is actually quite heavy. Um, it doesn't feel like it's so much when you're, it's in your hands, but when you're trying to balance it on your head, um, it is a little bit of an issue. I also made this a three quarter size, so it doesn't completely envelop my head. Um, and that would have probably given a little more stability, but um, I don't know, I just kind of liked the uh, off sized sizedness of it. <laughs> the strange sizing of it. Um, the other thing is, of course, I used uh, I used a power bank to power the Arduino, and um, it was a little hard. Well, first of all, it's a little heavier than, say, if I just used um, a little cell battery. I'm not 100% sure how much power I would actually need, um, so I kind of just went an easy route and went overboard. And the original power bank that I used in the video that I shot before was is this one, um, and it's quite long. It actually fits in the hat, so I thought, great, it'll fit in the hat. And then once I installed the zipper on the inside, then I realized I had a really hard time trying to shove the components inside. I have, <laughs> so I have this other small one, and it's already, this one fits better. Um, but then you have the issue of this cable here, which doesn't really want to bend. I got this right right angle USB and it, I don't know if it works better. It just puts the angle in a different location. Um, let's see if we can pull all of this out. <laughs> this whole entire, <laughs> oh no, it's, yeah, see, now this is exactly the issue. I mean, once it's in there, it's in there. And so the zipper is great, but I don't know why I didn't just use Velcro. I, I always seem to have to make things a little bit hard on myself. Um, yeah, so, you know, I have a whole breadboard in here um, and this container and just all of it sort of adds up. Um, also, I used a couple layers of the uh, batting on here, which I think added to the weight more than it seems like it would. Um, part of that is because I used, this is fabric that I used on uh, this sleeve of the dress and I just had it and I thought, why not? But it does show the pattern of the buckram when you stretch it over it. So that's part of the reason why you kind of have to, to put the batting on it just to make it a lot smoother. I don't know if that would have been so necessary with this because I mean like three quarters of it is covered by the LEDs. <laughs> um, but live and learn. I did actually, I was smart this time because I didn't really think about it too much with that hat is that I put um, several different like little elastic um, loops on it. So I actually was able to put two separate headbands in there and then put the headbands on and then secure the headbands. Um, sometimes it worked great and then sometimes I could just not get it to stay in place. So yeah, there, there's ways to fix that, but um, that is probably some of the biggest issues. Um, what else? I, I would say I'm, the programming aspect of it is something that I thought was what I was gonna have the hardest amount doing and at least on the very basic level of getting it set up and at least just running and showing anything took me probably a couple hours at most. I was completely shocked. Part of that is because we now have the internet and so I'm able to look at videos and forums and and uh, all sorts of instructions. Um, I this, this is an Arduino Nano and this is um, just a cheapy generic one I got off of Amazon, um, and same with the um, this flexible LED uh, panel. They're both just sort of generic things I got, got off of Amazon. Didn't have any kind of instructions. Um, unlike if you got a more official product, they tend to have better educational resources on their website. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm pretty fortunate. I think I found some people talking about similar kinds of little Chinese made products in order to get it to work. But it just, this is very simple. Um, so that was a delight. I had originally wanted the the uh, scrolling text to be random and I just couldn't figure it out in time. Um, I was able to 
get more than one text to display. So that was at least a minor win, but it was always in the same order. Um, I just need to dive more into the programming language for Arduino and in order to do a more complicated things, but I definitely think I'll be doing that in the future, but these things take time. But super delighted this worked at all because I had, um, I had my doubts. It was just a, uh, an idea. I was like, I, I think I can do that. I, I, I circled around programming for long enough and various techno technological things. I figured I, I had it in me, but I wasn't super confident, particularly when the dress, which I made first, it, it, it ran, it ran, it took longer than I expected, of course. And so then I was kind of running out of time to get this done in time for New Year's. So, um, yeah, but very delighted with how this came out, to be honest. So I'd like to make some improvements, uh, down the road, maybe New Year's, uh, going into 2022, <laughs> we'll be able to leave our houses. That would be delightful. Um, or maybe I'll just live stream my head on the internet again a year from now. <laughs> <laughs>